Welcome to First Congregational United Church of Christ in Asheville. Today we are celebrating Trinity Sunday, the only Sunday in the church year that is based on a concept, a formula, a metaphor, rather than a scripture. Trinity is a riddle that has not been easily solved in 2,000 years, but it is a mystery that truly gathers us into community. You are invited today to join our community, no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey. You are welcome to come and sit with us and refresh yourself. As is the custom here, you are invited to take a moment to unwind and to relax. Breathe in, invite the spirit to enter in, Breathe out, offering that spirit to surround us all in love. Breathe in, breathe out. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In the beginning, the Spirit of God swept over the face of the waters. In the beginning, God said, Let us make humankind in our own image, and so we came into being, created by God, who exists in community. We are here as God's community to worship the source of our being. of brokenness in every wilderness God has seen us through times when our strength was gone somehow we carried on God has seen us through look behind and see throughout history God has never trust God is guiding us God is with us here right now God will see me through God will see you through God will see us through somehow step by step we'll be given all we need God will see us through this now. In times of brokenness, in every wilderness, God has seen us through. Times when our strength was gone, somehow we carried on. God has seen us through. Look behind and see throughout history. God has never let us down. Lean ahead and trust God is guiding us. God is with us here right now. God will see me through. God will 
and respect for each other. An image of community with shared blessings and mission. You have made us caretakers over the work of your hands. You have charged us to be fruitful and multiply, to make disciples of all nations. Forgive us, God. We have denied our purpose. We have abused the earth's resources for our own selfish gain. And the consequences wreak havoc upon the fish of the sea birds of the air, and every living thing that moves upon the earth. Forgive us, God, we have defiled your image. We have regarded some of your children as other, and therefore beyond the reach of your love and care because of their professed faith in you, or lack thereof, is different from our own. God desires to see broken relationships restored and has heard our prayer. In the name of Jesus the Christ and in the power of the Holy Spirit, we are forgiven. Good morning. So I have a very brief message for you this morning for children's time. I'm wearing a shirt today. This happens to be from our winter youth retreat this year. It says, love who, love how. You know, some adults have a hard time understanding who they should love or how they should love. But you, our children, know that we should love everyone and how we should love those people or everyone else is by treating them all the same by loving one another as we want to be treated you know based on some of our children's church lessons that jesus gave us two great commandments the first one was to love the lord your god with all your mind heart soul and strength and the other one is similar to it is to love our neighbors as ourselves. And we've talked in children's church that our neighbors aren't just the people who live right next door to us. Our neighbors are each of the people that we come into contact with, whether we're in the grocery store, whether we're at school, at church, wherever the case may be, whoever we come into contact with, they are our neighbors. Here recently in our country, there have been people who have not been treated fairly. And actually, it's not just recent. It's been for many, many years that these people have not been treated fairly. And there have been protests that have happened around our country over the last week and a half or so because someone was hurt and that person wasn't treated fairly. And so the message and the challenge for you this week is to know that everyone is loved by God and everyone is loved fairly by God. 
And so we, as people of God, as Christians, are to do the same thing. We are to love one another, regardless of how different we look or sound, what religion we practice, what color our eyes are, our, our, however, our, however different we are, God has told us that we should love one another. And so your challenge this week is to love all people, regardless of what they do or look like or sound like, etc., etc. And so now, I ask that you take the hand of someone, someone who is sitting nearby to you as we close in prayer. Gracious, loving God, Mother and Father, we ask that you be with us. Help us to know how to love one another as you love us, no matter what our differences may be. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. And also with you. Greetings of peace, friends at FCUCC. Thank you for inviting me to play you a song this morning as part of worship. I am grateful to get to worship with you all across the time and space through this miracle of technology that allows us to be more or less together. But not quite together, right? We all are struggling, I think, with the, um, with the distance, right? With the difficulty that we still are not safe to gather. The best way we can love each other is to have a bit of distance. And so how do we go about being community? How do we go about being the body of Christ when our physical bodies are not in proximity? And as I've been musing and pondering about that, uh, this little song came out. It's a new one. It's called Here For You. And I hope it has some gift for you this morning. So few cars driving by The main street of this river town Is strangely still and quiet the days flow by so slowly With no rhythm to the song I'm Trying to dodge the boulders As the river rolls along Back in March there was a meeting At the VFW They said we were all in the same boat But it really isn't true some boats have big motors and some have wooden oars. Some folks are in the water trying to make it to the shore. Our lives hang by a thread. To weave those threads together, they will make a rope that's strong enough to hold on to each other. If we all would pull a little, then just maybe we'll pull. Comfort. There are many mouths to feed, so bring what you can offer and ask for what you need. Let's be gentle with each other, we won't always get it right. You don't have to be a hero, just lean a little toward the light. You don't have to say you're okay, let's just stick to what is true. Smile and think it, God knows I'm struggling too. Mm -hmm. Our lives hang by a thread, to weave those threads together. They will make a rope that's strong enough to hold on to each other. If we all will pull a little, then just maybe we'll pull through. As long as I am here. 
here. Said as long as I am here, I will be here for you. Blessings, friends. Yes, David, you are here for us. We are grateful that you have been with us in both difficult and joyful times over the past years, and we thank you. About three months ago, we began to recognize the perils of pandemic, and we began to practice physical distance to reduce the impact that would have on our lives. We at FCUCC began coming together through the aid of technology. And yes, it is good to come, that we can come together in this way. It is coming together, yet not quite. You have named it well. Together, yet not quite. On Easter Monday, Many of you were introduced to a short video titled Easter Week that I created to share my experience and reflections as we embarked into this strange new territory of pandemic. I was amazed at the abundance and extravagance surrounding us in the natural world as it burst forth in its overwhelming majesty. It seemed Mother Nature was saying, Wake up, see how fruitful you can be and with me. I am resilient, ever able to live into evolving into the future. Come along, you are co-creators, not destroyers. This is the source of my engagement with wonder, with the gift of grace, to journey with particular mindfulness of surviving and thriving the perils of a year with pandemic, COVID-19. We have just slogged from Easter Monday through to Pentecost last week and now Trinity Sunday. It has been long and it has been difficult and it becomes more difficult by the day with the current events. It seems we are puzzling with this new direction, this struggle to move forward and somehow come out on the other side with a new normal. Is this somehow like the experience of the early followers of Jesus? Was there staying true to the Master, the time between Resurrection and Pentecost, when they received the gift of the Holy Spirit and Trinity? <clears throat> something like this? Actually, they didn't really know about Trinity. It is a concept that grew, that was developed by the church. It is something we use, something that has become part of the life and fabric of our church. It helps us to grapple with the mystery, the great mystery of three in one. How will we, and how will this tradition carry us through so that we will move to a new normal? A new normal that incorporates this community, our state and local community, our whole country, and our whole world. A new community a community that Jesus told us was at hand over 2,000 years ago and that continues to evolve. We certainly have many aspects of it, but it is not enough. It is not full enough. We need a community with a world table that has a place for everyone everyone. 
Let us continue our worship with these words from Holy Scripture. On May 25, 2020, George Perry Floyd, a black man, was killed in the Powderhorn community of Minneapolis, Minnesota. While Floyd was handcuffed and lying face down on a city street during an arrest, May 25, 2020, a day that in some way has marked each and every one of us, a day that we all are aware of, and a day that has led to uh, such uncertainty. Personally, the events took me downward. I found myself being sucked into a pit of despair. Streams of overwhelming emotions poured over and through me. I felt paralyzed, almost unable to reach out find a single thread anywhere to hang on to. And then a tiny light flickered. Beautiful passages of scripture started seeping into the darkness. Memories of comforting rituals, seasons of the church, year, decades of fully lived experience gradually filled the pit with light. Slowly, what had seemed so superficial during my plunge into the darkness, transformation began to turn it into hope. And the ability to remember who is there for me, my faith, my family, this church family, friends and neighbors, both close and distant. I rose early and I practiced my ritual by starting the day guided in meditation and reading from the Center for Action and Contemplation's meditation. These are the words of Richard Rohr describing a new power that restored my confidence to carry on to do my part. In an ideal sense, a community is a safe place. By practicing and nurturing the dignity of its members, the community is sustained even when challenged by external forces. Virgilio Elizondo, a Catholic priest and community organizer from San Antonio, Texas, compared communities formed among the marginalized in Latin America today with the earliest Christian communities. Working together in faith, they bring new life, hope, and dignity to their individual and corporate selves. Perhaps the current civil unrest we are experiencing across the nation is a cry for the same.
Let me repeat that last sentence. Perhaps the current civil unrest we are experiencing across the nation is a cry for the same. Perhaps. Is it possible that this civil unrest is another form of interrupting business as usual, a mysterious virus of the soul that is seeping into the hearts and minds of people of all ages and all walks of life. Is it possible that this is putting words into action, words such as coming out on the other side with a new normal? I could not help but be drawn back to the words of John Philip Newell that I shared in the video Easter week. Let's listen one more time to that passage. Here in the nunnery, I hear in my own heart the stirrings of the human soul. This may be a place of ancient ruin, but is a place also that shows the signs of a new birthing. It is a birthing that is happening in the hearts and lives of men and women throughout the world. This may be a place of crumbling stone, but it is a place also in which the inner foundations of a new spirituality are being laid. It is a spirituality that is emerging in the hopes and consciousness of communities everywhere. This may be a place in which it is impossible to define exactly what the relationship is between the many who pray here, but it is a place in which we are remembering that what we have lost affects us all. We may not know what the answers are, but we know that expressing our deepest longings for presence and for connection is a key to the way forward. As I sit in the nunnery, I am aware that this is my desire to bring the treasure of our Christian household to the yearnings of the world today. And I am seeing that we can do it in new ways, in ways that listen reverently to the hunger of the human heart, and in ways that will bring us closer to one another as individuals and as distinct traditions, instead of into further separation and brokenness. This is a desire that issues up from deep in the soul it is not a Christian desire, or a Jewish desire, or a Muslim desire. It is a holy human desire, and it will cost us much, but it is for the healing of creation. These three five words, it will cost us much, haunt me now as much as they haunted me on my first encounter. What I am witnessing, a vivid picture revealing the hiddenness of violence that is destroying the very fabric of life before our eyes, is now being revealed. And we hear the voices in the street shouting, we will not go back. As I compose this, uncertainty reigns supreme. None of the things that took me to the pit of despair have lessened, and the direction events will move in the near future remains unpredictable. This is not a place, nor the time for me to tell of the memories of that kind of community that grew me into the person I now am. A small sample of how miracles do occur is the gifts and generosity of our three talented musicians 
who have enriched the service this morning. Brian Circio and his daughter Emma Corvallis, who began with God Will See Us Through. Our own beloved Western North Carolina artist, David Lamott, who joined us moments ago with his new song, Here For You. Another thank you, David. And Tracy Howe, who will lead us back into the world at the end of this service with Build the World. One more time, in closing, hear these words from Richard Rohr from the CAC's daily meditation that provides me a grounding in this quicksand that threatens to engulf. Foundational love gives us hope and allows us to trust what is as the jumping off point no matter how unsteady it feels. It allows us to work together toward what can be. The life, death, and resurrection of Jesus shows us what's fully possible. God will always bring yet more life and wholeness out of seeming chaos and death. Cultural blind spots can only be overcome by a group of people affirming and supporting one another in an alternative consciousness. Thankfully, we're now seeing many people, religious and secular, from all around the world, coming together to form alternative systems for sharing resources, living simply, and imagining a sustainable future. It has been one of the spiritual gifts of the pandemic. God never misses a chance to help us grow up. So let us go, continue on, and do justice, love mercy, walk humbly with God. Blessed be. Let us pray. We pray for the lonely ones, knowing that some of us are lonely. And we pray for the brokenhearted, knowing that some of us are brokenhearted. All of our hearts and minds are leaning in with clear intention, joining in your way of love in the world. We pray for the wounded, knowing that some of us are wounded. And we pray for the regretful ones, knowing that some of us are regretful. All our hearts and minds are leaning in with clear intention, joining in your way of love, of the healing. We pray for the starving ones, knowing that some of us are starving. And we pray for the imprisoned ones, knowing that some of us are imprisoned. All our hearts and minds are leaning in with clear intention, joining in your way of justice in the world. We pray for the dying ones, knowing that some of us are dying. And we pray for the newborn ones, knowing that some of us are arriving. All our hearts and minds are leaning in with clear intention, joining in your way of love in the world. Amen. Now let us all join together in the prayer modeled by our sibling, Jesus. Ground of all being, mother of life, may we know your presence here seeking your will upon this earth. Grant all of your creatures food for today and strength for our journey. Pardon our falsehoods as we forgive those who are untrue to us. Do not forsake us in our need, but lead us to new birth for the glory of life and the light of life are yours forever.
Holy Mother, you have birthed us into life. Holy Father, you have nurtured us along our way. In you we have life and move and have our being. To you we bring our offerings of praise and thanksgiving. We open ourselves to your presence in this time of worship. Fill us with resolve and purpose to be your community and to expand our boundaries until all creation is renewed and all people are welcome and blessed. We ask this through the risen and ascended Christ who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Sovereign and wondrous God, you continually seek ways to share your love and grace with us by whatever means necessary. You reach out as Creator, Christ, and the Holy Spirit to shower us with the gifts of creation, our lives, and each other. Help us to be good stewards of these gifts by using them for the benefit of your kingdom, by loving everyone you put in front of us today and receiving the grace offered to us when we fall short of our goals. Accept these offerings as our response to your generosity and help us to be wise in their handling. For with your gifts come authority and great responsibility. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our brother Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had blessed, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. In like manner, after supper, he took the cup, blessed it, and gave it to the disciples, saying, This is the blood of the covenant spilled for you. Share this meal as often as you do, in remembrance of me. Holy God, descend your spirit upon these gifts of grain and grape, that they may be for us the presence of the living Christ. And pour out your spirit upon us. so that we might be taken, blessed, broken, and distributed so that others might know the blessings of living in communion with you and one another. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, almighty God, now and forever. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take and eat. This is the bread of life. Take and drink. This is the cup of blessing. Mm -hmm. 
Let us pray. For the beauty of creation, the gift of life, and your presence with us now, we give you thanks. Send us now to be channels of your mission in the world, to build your community on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. grace of Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit go with you and before you, today and forevermore. Amen. 